Hello. I'm going to begin this video by making a statement and I want you to tell me if you agree with it. The mantra to master GMAT quant is to learn the concepts that are typically tested on the test and then practice as many questions as one can. Now the reason many of us agree with this mantra is because this is how we've been learning all our lives. So why should GMAT quant be any different? Now Based on our research for an exam such as the GMAT, this mantra is not only inefficient but also does not always produce favorable results. This means that students who resort to solving hundreds or even thousands of questions after learning the concepts not only end up wasting a lot of time but also are unable to improve beyond a certain point. So what do people who score a Q50 or a Q51 do differently? In our experience, students who score a Q50 or a 51 add an additional step in their preparation. They learn the concepts typically tested on the GMAT. They master the six process skills that are required to solve the questions. And they solve only the required number of questions to perfect their ability to solve difficult GMAT questions. Now, these process skills are woven into the fabric of our verbal and quant courses. In this video and through this playlist, I'm going to answer the following questions. What are these six process skills? How do they help you overcome the score plateau and reach that Q50 or 51 score without solving thousands of questions? And how can you master these process skills? Now, there are six process skills that GMAT Quant tests. These are skills to infer, translate, simplify, visualize, consider all cases, and apply constraints. Now, how did we arrive at these six process skills? Essentially, we asked ourselves these questions. Why do students continue to make mistakes on 700 level questions despite knowing the underlying concepts? Why is it that students don't ace GMAT quant despite spending countless hours solving questions? What do students who actually ace the GMAT do? We spent thousands of hours researching the official content and arrived at these six process skills. We concluded that students who master these skills consistently solve 700 level questions correctly. In this playlist, using examples, I'm going to first demonstrate what each of these process skills is. Then we will do a deep dive into each of these skills starting with the inference process skill. By the end of this, many of you will have recognized these process skills as the missing link that is preventing you from getting that dream quant score or applying to that target B school. Now, these skills are applicable across all subsections of quant and both types of quant questions, problem solving and data sufficiency. So as you master them in the context of one subsection, say number properties, you will notice that your proficiency in those skills will improve in the other subsection, say algebra. To offer a simile, building these process skills is akin to building a muscle. As you build a muscle in the context of one sport, say tennis, your performance improves in the other sports such as racquetball or squash. And one last thing. I want to make sure that you do not feel burdened by the prospect of learning something brand new. In fact, it's quite the opposite. Mastering process skills is a very logical activity, one that focuses on re-channeling your existing resources, that is your conceptual knowledge, to maximize their output. Now, the next six videos are going to be fun. Using 700 level questions, I'm going to introduce you to these process skills. We'll start with the process skill of inference and then move on to translate, simplify and so on and so forth. So happy learning.